Hi guys, how are you? Well, I'm just going to do a reasonably quick video today and um, the point of my video is to outline the differences of what systems are out there, how to set up and stuff like that really. Um, anyway, I'll just, I just kicked up my program, the ACDC program before I um, start this video and yeah I'm at 85% I've done a max of 2700 watts that's not bad actually it's the highest I've seen so far and I'm currently running on the grid right now I ran off the grid yesterday so anyway let's get started now the first system we have here is just in case the system now with his system he has two parts he has an off grid part and he has an on grid part. Now, I'll explain to you the, the on grid first. <coughs> so, the way it works is mains comes in. Now, in the mains, you've got a line going straight to the hybrid. So, the hybrid can set to feed any excess power back to the grid, and he makes money on that. And then we have a line here that goes to a female socket now and then and that's that's that part then the hybrid has another has a line coming off it which is once again a female socket I'll explain to you the reason why there's a female socket and I'll explain to you in a minute then on the off-grid side he has the IPS with solar panels. He also has a classic and a PCM. I haven't included on. I haven't included them on here because I'm mainly outlining the AC side of the actual system to show that what part is AC, what part of the AC is on grid, and what part of the AC is on grid, off grid. Sorry. So the way it goes in solar panels. And we got the IPS that pushes power out through um, changeover chamber switch in part one, then it goes to the house. And you go see there's a part two here. Now this socket here is a male socket. Now I'll explain to you the reasoning between these socket layouts. Now they're they're all 32 amp sockets two female and one male. Now the reasoning for this is when you when you plug in into the female you're using a male plug. Okay now the reason for the male plug is if you had a fee if you had a male plug a socket on here you could let you keep yourself. So by having a female socket and then using a male plug to plug into it you are preventing yourself from getting electrocuted. Now, the reasoning for a male socket on here is the other end of cable that he uses, that he runs from this socket to here, or from this socket to here, is so that when he plugs, once he plugs in, into the active AC site, in to plug into here, the cable is live. Now, if he were to use a female socket and a male plug, he can let you keep himself. But by doing the male socket and female plug, he cannot get electrocuted on that plug. In actual fact, that is standard. I oh, know definitely standard here in Australia to have a female plug plug into a male socket. When you're when you're plugging in from an active generator or mains, so it's, it's standard a caravan setups and anything else that uses a connect to uh, a connection from an active AC active AC point. So anyway, if he wants to run his if he wants to run the house off the mains. He, run, he connects a 32 amp lead from this socket to this socket and changes the changeover switch to n position number 2 and then that runs his house off 
the mains. If he wanted to run off the hybrid, he does similar. Runs the cable from the socket to the socket, puts it in position two, and then his house is running directly off the hybrid. Now, both hybrid and the IPS are connected to the batteries, but it is the IPS, the Classic, and the PCM doing all the work. The hybrid doesn't do that much work. It only does the work if needed on cloudy days. But most times it's always putting a whole heap of excess power in. You probably are putting a couple hundred watts of power um, into the batteries. That's it. Not much at all. <coughs> now that's his system screen. I'm going to go now to my system. With my system, I have a different setup. Now, do not take these, this wiring literally is just an example and an illustration of what's out there now with my system i have the mains coming in it goes to position one of my changeover switch now as, as well as that i have the hot the grid tie connected and a line going to the ips but <coughs> That IPS is not connected to the main. It's the breaker is always in its off position. So what will happen is, when power, any power that is generated from the grid tie is always is going to the grid. Always. If I have it in position two, it will always be pushing power to the grid. If I have it in position one, it will feed the house and then push the excess to the grid. Then. I have my IPS classic mm, setup. So if I want to run off my batteries in solar, I put the change oven switch into position 2 and then I'm feeding power from the IPS to the batteries. Now that is my setup. So if I want to run off grid, I put in position 2, I'm off grid. If I want to run on grid, position 1, and I'm on grid. That's basically it the next system which is the hybrid system now with a hybrid system they are slightly set up in a different way so how a hybrid system works is you got a mains then from the mains to the hybrid from the hybrid to the house now way way it goes is any power that is generated first goes to the house then the leftover power goes to the mains and then if for some reason if the um that the mains gets cut off the hybrid will provide all the power to the house and in, with the eventual hybrid is you can connect some batteries to even one uh, one longer even during night time i know i'm just explaining this very simple but i'm just showing you the the, the, uh, the differences the next system out there is the grid tie. Now, a grid tie is slightly hooked up differently. So the way a grid tie works is you got your solar, solar goes you got your solar comes into the grid tie from the grid tie to the house. Then all any excess power that is not being used is all is goes straight out to the grid. Now if the grid goes off, the grid tie turns off and the house turns off. You've got no backup at all. Um, grid ties are island safe. So they no power, they turn off. That's it. That's a basic example of a grid tie. And if all power generated goes to the house, then from there it goes to the grid. And that's it. Next one is an off-grid house. Now, <coughs> with an off-grid house is they have a solar panels, inverter, solar um, solar controller, controller, and batteries. All power that is generated by the solar goes to the house and batteries. Now, for emergency uses, they will do a generator. Now, the generator will either be connected to a changeover switch to the house, or they would be using a IPS compatible generator 
which then all power goes through the gen from the generator to the IPS. The IPS will distribute the power between the house and the batteries. They will charge the batteries up and power the house. But <coughs> that's a basic example of, of of the setup. All so the IPS is island safe. It does not push any power out to the grid at all. Grid tight is an island safe unit as well. So if there's no power, it will shut down. It won't produce anything. With a hybrid, it is an island safe. It is island safe as well. So if there's no grid, it will still be running, but it will not be pushing any power to the grid at all because it cannot see the grid at all. And that's practically it. All that gives you an example of what's out there. Now, the other thing too is, I just want to do a community announcement for everyone. Be careful. There are some fake or clone inverters out there. They claim to be Australian certified, but they're not. They are either... The clones are either made by... Fong Xing, some strange name, and the other one is called Must Power. Be careful, they are currently doing copies of the MPP solar units, and also they're now they've recently been trying to uh, copy the IPSs from Giant Power. So, just letting you know, be careful of what you're getting, make sure it is the right brand. Um, you don't want to buy the unit and find out it is a ripoff. Be careful. That is just what I'm doing for a community awareness. So everyone knows. Be careful what you're looking at. Then make sure you're getting a real legit thing. And the specs are right. For example, this one here. This is just a prime example. Okay, the way with the giant and the and the. MPP solar um, units, they can charge up to a combination of 120 amps to the batteries. Now, this is a dead giveaway. I does 20 or 30 amps to the batteries. That's it. And it's only got a 50 amp um, ch um, solar charge controller in it. But problem is, it doesn't state that if it is an MPP or a PWM. So these are some of the warnings already. Also to be careful of what you get out there. There are a lot of units out there that don't state that they are MPP or PWM. Um, get them to clarify it. Make sure they're telling the truth. Just be careful guys. Um, especially in Australia. These two units I'm displaying right now. This one and this one are not compliant with Australia rules and regulations. If for some reason uh, something happens and it burns your house down, you will not be covered under insurance. Assurance with insurance rules, they state you um, it must have been installed by a qualified Sparky and it must be Australia certified. I can tell you right now, these two are definitely not Australia certified, so be careful of what's out there guys. Oh, I, I hope this was what too, wasn't too long. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. So if it went for a while, you guys take care and see you later. See you. Bye.